Let's dive into key updates in Flutterflow for June and July. First, we've added a new action to trigger a Firestore query. This powerful new feature allows you to load any relevant data when an action is triggered. You can view it in the Action Editor under the Firestore tab. This provides a more efficient, responsive, and user-friendly experience by only loading necessary data when it's actually needed. Next, we have the Sticky Header widget. You can add this to any vertically scrolling widget. A sticky header stays put at the top of the screen while the rest of the content scrolls beneath. For example, while you scroll through listings on Airbnb, the search bar and filters stay fixed at the top of your screen. Here's a simple example of a travel bucket list. As I scroll down, the top bar continues to stay stagnant. That's the sticky header. It ensures key functionalities remain within reach no matter where your browsing journey takes you. Next, we've added new actions to start and stop audio recording. Let's take the social media tile and add a recording feature. Our first action can request user permissions, and our second action can start the recording. You can find these new actions under the Utilities tab. We can give this recording a name as well, which we will use to update the widget state. Likewise, we can do the same thing for stopping audio recording as well. And last but not least, we can always play the sound based on the recordings that we have saved. This feature enables powerful new functionality like recording voice notes in a note-taking app or practicing pronunciation in a language app. Next up is the item spacing property. It allows you to automatically apply a defined space between children in a column, row, or list view. This feature eliminates the need for manually adding padding between items, which also simplifies and accelerates how you build layouts. Finally, we have our Unsplash integration. You can find this anytime you are working with an image widget. Simply select the search bar and you can access the integration. Now you can browse and add beautiful stock images from right inside Flutterflow. Next, you can now trigger actions when data is updated in Firestore. This new feature allows you to handle updates to data dynamically. For example, by automatically navigating to a new page when a document field value changes. Simply select the on data change on a widget which has a query to respond to changes in the data. Next up, we've updated our upload file action to allow users to upload multiple files at once. This enhancement significantly improves your user's experience by saving time and effort. You can find it by going into the upload file action under utilities in the actions flow editor. Next, we've added support for letting your users sign in using their GitHub credentials. In order to access this, First, enable authentication. Then, set an action for authentication for login and select the GitHub option. Note that this feature will only work on web apps, so we suggest not enabling it if you're going to be launching to other platforms. We've also added a new remove widget feature to make it easier to work within the widget tree. Just select a widget, right click, and remove widget. This new feature spares child widgets from deletion by reassigning them to the next parent up in the hierarchy. Now you no longer have to manually move child widgets when you want to delete its parent. Big update, we now support while loops inside of actions. You can use this for input validation, to call APIs on a loop based on a condition, or for complex event handling. Let's visualize how this works by creating a countdown timer. I've set up two page state variables here, one for the time and one for a message. Now I can add a loop on any action. First, I'll go ahead and set up the condition of the loop based on if the timer count is greater than zero. Next, within the loop, I'll set an action to update our widget state. The update will include reducing our page state variable by one. And finally, I'll also go ahead and add a time delay of 1000 milliseconds for visualization. Lastly, we'll add another action here to update the widget state once the counter has reached below zero. This will allow us to know that the action loop has been completed. And I sped this up a little bit, but you can see that this example is effectively working using the loops action. Next, we've added a new option to disable an action. This feature is a game changer for debugging. Here, I have an error on this update media action that I want to come back to later. So I'll go ahead and just disable it for right now. This feature is going to be very useful as you experiment with your logic or tackle complex action flows. Next up, you can now define opacity for a widget. You can find the opacity option under visibility in the right properties panel. This new feature can be accessed on all widgets and opens up a whole new world of creative possibilities. You can also set opacity from a variable which would be very useful in this example of a progress bar. The opacity effect 
will help you create everything from transparent buttons and overlay effects all the way to that futuristic app idea you have for Apple Vision Pro. Lastly, we've added infinite scroll support for page view, grid view, and staggered view widgets. This new feature is easy to implement and can help you build even better user experiences. You can toggle on infinite scroll when querying a collection. You can use infinite scroll to show a list of products with grid view, and you can add it to page view to showcase a list of photos or even a staggered view for a Pinterest style layout. Next up, a few non-product updates. We launched our new Flutterflow Perks program. We partnered with leading tech platforms to bring you over $50,000 in savings while you work. You can check out all the deals from RevenueCat, Framer, Notion, and more when you start building. Next, we publicly launched a suite of AI assistants through our AI Gen release. AI Page Gen can take you from text to page to kickstart your development. AI Schema can generate backend schema in seconds. AI Theme Gen can be your AI Muse for your color scheme. AI Code Gen is your code co-pilot in your browser. And finally, Component Gen can help you build foundational widgets for consistency in your project. You can learn more at flutterflow.io slash AI Gen. And finally, we're excited to announce the launch of our new Flutterflow community forum with upgraded features to improve your experience. This will include topic-specific forums, a job board, showcase tabs, and most importantly, a wish list to get you the product updates that you most need. To join the new community, open the account resources page, the community resources page, and hit Flutterflow community. That's it for this updates video. We'll see you in the next one.